morning, Bethany. So glad y'all are with us today. I hope you've been out enjoying this wonderful, wonderful spring weather we've been having again. Maybe that's a good sign for us. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no
Good morning. Welcome to Bethany Church. Here are some announcements. We want to see you send in pictures of you and your family wearing the color green. Email pictures to Denise Keller at office at bethanyonthehill.org. Pictures will be shown and in worship. Bethany is hiring if you you or someone you know is interested in serving in the ministry. The church is by helping with the audio and visual production of the weekly worship service and other special events. Please contact Denise at the in the church office for details of the tech assistant job at office at bethanyonthehill.org. This will be a paid position average of 10 hours per week. Life Network Baby Bottle Campaign, you are welcome to give money and write check with the baby bottle on the metal line. Need IMAs for the house and neighborly services, food pantry, pantry in marsh. Canned chicken, corn, dish soap, green beans, shampoo, pasta size, pork and beans, and other IMAs. Thank you for your support. Alongside with our online worship broadcast, come to the worship in the sanctuary at Bethany Church Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. No reservation needed. Side sanctuary doors open at 9.45 a.m. Thursday, April 1st, church console meeting at 5.30 p.m. Marty Thursday, worship service, 7 p.m. Bethany Church office hours are Tuesday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to noon. Enjoy worship. Good morning. May the love and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest on each and every one of you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, blessed and holy are you. We praise you. We glorify you. May your name be magnified throughout eternity. We give thanks for the many blessings you have given us. We give thanks for your love for us, your sacrifice, and for the gifts of salvation and eternal life. Jesus, you are our refuge, our rock, our foundation, and our fortress. Help us to always seek your wisdom and power first, no matter how small the need may be. For without you, our strength and understanding is insufficient and flawed. This morning we come to you with an important request. We ask for a deeper walk with you and to help us develop our personal relationship with you. Help us to not only be disciples but apostles. Help us to be doers and not just followers. And help us to live by your new commandment to love one another. Sweet Jesus, we ask for prayers for the Christians in our congregation our community, our nation, and the world. Send your Holy Spirit to open their hearts and minds so they may replicate your example and spread the good news of your eternal kingdom throughout the world. We ask prayers of comfort and healing for the sick, the downtrodden, and the helpless. If it is your will, Lord, touch and heal them so that they can come back to the fold fully. And we now come to you in silent prayer so all the petitions of your people may be heard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. I have a ministry moment first here this morning. I wanted to let you know what's going to be happening um, Easter Sunday. We are planning to have an Easter egg hunt right after worship service on Easter Sunday. And with the weather, I'm hoping that we can have the older kids out here by the portico and that we can launch some Easter eggs. And then the younger kids, we can put out here in the garden in the front of the building. 
And if it's the weather doesn't cooperate, we'll figure that out that day for plan B. Um, I also have some unfilled Easter eggs here in the front pew. If uh, the congregants could take some home, there's three dozen in each bag and bring those back by Palm Sunday. That would help us get fully, how should I say, fully loaded for the Easter egg hunt. Many thanks there. So this morning I want to play a game with you. I have a canister of water here, as you can see. And we're going to play sink or float. So what do you think? I have a wooden building block. Sink or float? Raise your hand. What do you think? How about sink? Who thinks it's going to sink? Okay, sink. How about float? Okay, let's find out. You ready? Oh, it's a floater. Ah, okay. Now I have a metal spoon. Okay, what about it? Sink? Raise your hand if you think it's going to sink. All right, how about float? Oh, no takers. Oh, I see one taker on the float. <laughs> All right, let's find out. Oop, it's a sinker. All right, now I have a piece of foil. What do you think? Sink? Float? Okay, let's see. Oh, it's a floater. Okay, same piece of foil. I'm going to change it the way it is. You know what? I'm going to get rid of this because it kind of covers the whole surface. What do you think now? Sink or float? It's all in a wide. Think it's going to sink? Okay, let's find out. Oh, tricked you. It's a floater. It's still the same thing, just in a different form. Okay, now the golfers can't answer this one. This is kind of heavy. What do you think? Sinker? Or is it a floater? Oh, I'm not seeing too many answers here. All right. Sink? They got a sink here. All right, let's find out. Oh, yeah, that's a sinker. All right, so I have a question for you. Are you a sinker or a floater? And no, I'm not going to throw you in the baptistry right behind me and below me. But I have a Bible passage that I think will help you determine whether you're a sinker or a floater. All right, you remember the story when Jesus fed the 5,000 people from the five loaves and the two fish. Well, after that, it, was, it had been a long day. And he decided to go up the mountainside and pray. And he sent his disciples out on a boat to cross over to the lake. And he told them he would meet them there later. So this is what happened. The disciples got out on the boat. It was nighttime. Water got rough. Lots of waves. And in the middle of the night, here Jesus appeared to them walking on the water. And they thought it was a ghost. They were afraid. And this is what happened next. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind and the waves, he was suddenly afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? So when he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sink. And I know we all have troubles in our lives. So when those storms come, we need to keep that, as Pastor Gary says, that laser focus on Jesus, our eyes on Jesus. Because when we don't, and we rely on our own abilities, guess what? We're going to be like the golf ball, and we're going to sink. Let's pray this morning. Dear Lord, I just ask your blessings on the children, that they come to know you, and that they keep their focus on you in all they do. I just ask this all in your name. Amen.
Thank you, Susan Heikus and everyone. Welcome in to Bethany Church located in the Columbia, Illinois. My name is Alan Miller. I'm your pastor. As we continue in service, uh, we come to the service and sacrament of Holy Communion. Holy Communion just basically means a set-apart meal. And you're invited, as you are out there with us online, to gather up bread or crackers or some kind of food representative and juice or drink or some kind of drink to represent the body and the blood of Christ as we prepare to receive communion. And those here in the sanctuary are invited as well. If you do not have communion elements with you today, I can always meet with you and we can have communion together another time. Just let me know. Back in the first century, Jesus deeply desired to have a meal with his disciples took the bread, lifted it up, broke it, and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup, lifted it up, and pronounced a brand new teaching for everyone to hear. This is my blood poured out for you and for many other people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And now, mindful that God is always looking for our response, we prepare ourselves to receive the elements of Holy Communion. Body of Christ, the blood of Christ given for you. Let us receive. Amen. We invite you as we continue in worship and our time together this day, or whenever you tune in, to fill out a virtual connection card. The way you can do that is type in connect.bethanyonthehill.org. That's connect.bethanyonthehill.org. We welcome you in, those who are online, is to like and to comment and to share. Have conversation with each other, with brand new people, with familiar people. Have conversation, connect. And flash up emojis. That's been the big thing throughout the pandemic, the last 11 and a half, going on 12 months now of the pandemic, as people are expressing how they feel, whether they're really happy or whether they're concerned, or even there's an eye roll emoji, which is really popular with junior highs, high schoolers, and young adults, and maybe also some adults as well. We are shaped here in the life of Bethany Church by our vision and our mission. Our vision is what we do, and our mission is the follow-through of how we do it. Our mission, see change lives for Jesus Christ. And our mission, how we do it, see change lives for Jesus Christ through worship, discipleship, and service. We do this to glorify God. We come to the point in the service of collecting our offering. I want to thank everyone for the ways you support the ministries and the life and the vision and the mission of Bethany Church. Pandemic or no pandemic, the church continues on. And like one of our church members, Roy Schannenberger, said a few weeks ago, we haven't missed a beat. We've met every Sunday, whether it's a combination of online and on-site or all online, or pastor in front of his fireplace with wife and daughter running tech. Back in those days, it's good to be together. But we invite you to continue to give to the church and to help us move the cause of Jesus Christ forward. And the ways you can do that will flash on the wall of the screen probably. You can text to give at 618-205-6880. That's 618-205-6880. Or online at give.bethanyonthehill.org. That's give.bethanyonthehill.org. Or by mail, Bethany Church, 1608 Hilltop Road, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. That's Bethany Church. 1608 Hilltop Road, Columbia, Illinois, 62236. And here for those gathered in the sanctuary in the offering plates inside the side sanctuary doors. And we thank you for your support. We come to the time of our service where we arrive at the sermon. I invite you to stand wherever you are as we prepare ourselves to receive God's word. Scripture this morning as we continue to walk with Jesus through Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, is Matthew 14, 13 through 36. Here is the reading of God's word. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed, 
and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, That isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he took, told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed it to the people. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day, in addition to all the women and children. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? They climbed back into the boat. The wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret. When the people recognized Jesus, the news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated wherever you are. Who can you count on? Who can you call in the middle of the night? Who will take you to the airport at 4 a.m.? St. Louis, Nashville, wherever? In other words, who walks with you? Who walks with you? You see, there's a longing for connection. There's a hunger. Everyone needs a hand to hold on to as the song comes out of Indiana from yesteryear. There's a need for connection. Our song leading into our scriptures from now all the way up through Easter is a song called The Great Divide by Breaking Benjamin, and this is part of the chorus. So I'll wait for you as I keep your faith alive, and I'll pray for you as we cross the great divide. Don't miss that. There's connection, and it gets even better. We are doing this together. We are crossing whatever we face, pandemic or no pandemic. There's such a hunger for connection. Big ideas today will flash on the wall or the screen. We're invited to walk with Jesus. As we walk with Jesus, we go on an adventure. When the storms of life are raging, the adventure is full force. And an Alan Miller original, soup pog. And you're like, what on earth is soup pog? United Methodists love acronyms, and I've kind of patented this one myself, and there's no money or any royalties or residuals. Stepping out on the promises of God. It may catch on after this morning, right? Suit pog. Stepping out on the promises of God, or maybe not. Matthew 14, verses 13 and 14. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he went off by himself in a boat to a remote area to be alone. Jesus goes off by himself from time to time. 
But the crowds heard where Jesus was headed and followed by land from many villages. A vast crowd was there as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Some people are already walking with Jesus. They can't get enough of the teachings and the time spent with their Lord and Savior, whether they fully understand him or not. Verse 15, that evening the disciples came to Jesus and said, this is a desolate place and it's getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. The disciples tell Jesus, send the crowds away. Make them go away, Jesus. And Jesus says, no way. And the disciples might say in their minds, Yahweh, which means God, maybe. Verse 16, but Jesus replied, it's not necessary to send them away. You feed them. The big idea here is we're invited to walk with Jesus. Jesus invites the disciples to walk with him and feed people. Jesus says, you feed them. And you just got to know that Peter is the self-professed lead disciple. He's got it all worked out in his mind. I've got this, guys. I will go to Captain D's in Cahokia and place a huge to-go order. Captain D's is a fast food seafood restaurant. Lots of fish. Don't knock it until you try it. Imagine Peter arriving at the local Captain D's. I need bread and fish for 5,000 people, please. Oh, wait, check that. Don't, I also need bread and fish for the women and children as well. Do not forget the women and the children. And the Captain D's manager would be like, are you serious? This has to be a prank. Who put you up to this? Oh, we know who it is. It was John. John likes to give you a hard time, Peter. There's a story on Easter morning in the book of John that you just can't get enough of in the Bible. Peter and John are racing, sprinting to the empty tomb where they are told Jesus is no longer there. He's risen from the dead. And Peter looks inside the tomb and walks away confused. John, however, looks inside the tomb and he completely believes in Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed Son of God. Well, when the story's written by John, that's how it's going to go, right? Well, meanwhile, Peter is confused. But in our story, which has Peter at Captain D's, Peter says, Jesus put me up to this. This is not a prank. This comes from Jesus. Fish and bread for 5,000 people and also fish and bread for the women and the children too. Captain D's would be like, all hands on deck. We need lots of fish and bread to fill this order. Call the store in Fairby Heights for we need their fish and bread too. Real quick side note, that was one of my hangouts back in the day, in the Fairby Heights days, Captain D's. Mercy. Well, we know that Peter did not go to Captain D's to get the bread and the fish and to feed everyone. But at this point in the story, the problem still remains. There are lots and lots of hungry people and very little fish and bread. We're talking five small loaves of bread and two fish. That's like a snack package for a person or two. So the people need to be fed. How? Verse 17 Impossible, the disciples exclaimed. We have only five loaves of bread and two fish. Check this. The disciples tell Jesus that something is impossible. How's it ever going to go when anyone tells Jesus that something is impossible? As we remember that Jesus is the Messiah, the anointed Son of God with the power of God, the love of God, the reach of God for where it's most needed. Verses 18 and 19, Jesus, staving off exasperation, says, bring them here to me, the bread and the fish. Then Jesus engages in logistics. He tells the people to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and asked God's blessing on the food. Breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave some of the bread and fish to each disciple, and the disciples gave them to the people. Jesus looks up towards heaven. That's what we need to do. That's what some of our fellow United Methodists on planet United Methodists over the last week, and in particular this weekend, need to put their focus on heaven and on Jesus, the Son of God, for a variety of reasons. Well, Jesus comes in with a plan for the food distribution. Jesus will give the food to the disciples. The disciples will hand out the food to the people. You see, throughout this story, as well as apart from this story, we are invited to walk with Jesus, even miracles surrounding food. Verse 20, they all ate as much as they wanted, 
and they picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. You ever had a time where you've had a meal, you've eaten all that you wanted, and you're stuffed, and you're, you're gorged, and that kind of thing? That's a good deal, and then you go home and take a nap. I'm convinced as I get older, when you eat and eat and eat and then take a nap, that's a little bit of heaven, right? Let me illustrate a little bit. In my days and nights of running around Fairview Heights, there was this wondrous restaurant called Duff's. Now, you can go to a restaurant in non-pandemic days where there's a buffet or a smorgasbord that's all laid out, but Duff's took it up a notch. It was a rotating smorgasbord. All the people after church at First Baptist Church in Fairby Heights or wherever church you would go to would line up in like their stalls about the width of this pulpit and just wait as the food rotated around. Macaroni and cheese, beets, whoever eats that, um, fried chicken, uh, that kind of thing, shrimp, and of course, fish. And if you missed it, you'd have to wait for all the items to rotate around again, 68 items. And meanwhile, some people are really hungry or hangry, and they're elbowing each other or shoving each other a little bit. And if it's like an older aunt or like an older grandma, you just kind of put up with it. Anybody else have this experience? Duff's? It was amazing. Sadly, it's not there anymore. It's just a memory. But you can eat all that you want, A, Y, C, E, all you can eat, and the beauty of it As we look to the scripture story, the people ate bread and fish, and there was leftover food. But here's the twist. There's always a twist with Jesus. There were 12 baskets of leftover food. How long do you think it took the disciples to realize there were 12 baskets of leftover food, and they looked around, and there were 12 of them? They must have looked at each other and said, hey, Ho, Jesus is looking, and Jesus is saying something again, and he hasn't even said a word. There are 12 of us, and there's 12 baskets of food. Deeper still, in biblical heritage and in the faith of God and Jesus Christ, there are 12 sons of Jacob. There are 12 tribes of Israel, and there are 12 gates into the glory of heaven. Three gates in the east, three gates in the west, three gates in the north, and three gates in the south. Hallelujah. Twelve. You see, Jesus is like that, saying something without saying a word. Verse 21, the afterword of the story. About 5,000 men had eaten from those five loaves, in addition to all the women and children. Music swells, fade to black, happy ending for everyone. Everyone has had lots and lots of foods, full bellies, and there's even food left over for the next opportunity. That's a good day in life, isn't it? You see, walking with Jesus as an adventure to where sometimes there's a tension or a conflict and there's some kind of plan or a solution that's enacted and then you have conflict resolution and then like any good TV show or movie that you watch, I'm from the 80s, I'm from the TV generation, music swells, fade to black, happy ending. Unless you get one of those shows that says, to be continued, dot, 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 if you remember those. Verse 22, the ministry of Jesus rolls on, on to the next thing. Immediately after the feeding of all those people, Jesus made his disciples get back in the boat and cross to the other side of the lake or Sea of Galilee while he sent the people home. Cross the other side of the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is 13 miles long and eight miles wide. And when a storm would rise up suddenly on the Sea of Galilee, it was ferocious, intense, and violent. Those who were crossing the waters either courageously or foolishly would have to zigzag their pattern to get across the Sea of Galilee to try to fight the storm. The next big idea is as we walk with Jesus, we go on an adventure, and we might even ride in a boat. Who knows? As we walk with Jesus, We go on an adventure. The adventure will take us to interesting places, and we will have unique experiences. And you know this to be true as you talk with someone who is walking with the Lord or growing in their faith or becoming a Christian. It's very interesting. Verse 23 and 24, Afterward, Jesus went up into the hills to pray by himself. Night fell while he was still there. It's important that after you pour yourself out in whatever you're doing, especially serving in the name of Jesus, that you rest, you recharge, you reboot. Meanwhile, the disciples are in serious trouble. Far away from the land, a strong wind has risen, and they're fighting the heavy waves. And you can say it with me, the weather, it was getting rough, the tiny ship was tossed. If you don't say it out loud, you were thinking it, right? 
verses 25 and 26. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to the disciples walking on the water. When the disciples saw Jesus, they screamed in terror, thinking he was a ghost. Big idea, when the storms of life are raging, the adventure is in full force. You are in it, and you are experiencing it and feeling it. Have you ever screamed in terror? Or are you more like, I ain't afraid of no ghost? Well, screaming in terror, who are the disciples going to call? Not Jesus, evidently, because he scares the bejesus out of them. Verse 27, but Jesus spoke to them at once. It's all right, he said. I am here. Do not be afraid. When Jesus says, it's all right, it's all right. It's a challenge to walk with Jesus sometimes, literally or otherwise, especially when the storms of life rise up. Verse 28, then Peter, oh, Peter, bless your heart. Then Peter called to Jesus, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come walking out on the water. Cue the incredulous looks from Peter's fellow disciples. Cue the Napoleon dynamite sigh. Oh. And cue the sighs and the eye rolls. Peter is being Peter again. He's trying to get a leg up on all of us, the disciples are thinking. Verse 29, all right, come, Jesus said. It's like Jesus says, all right, Peter, let's see what you got. Come, walk. Remainder of verse 29. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. The disciples must be thinking Peter's finally lost it because he is in the water. This is a big deal to be in the water in the ancient world because the ancient world understanding that was taking hold at the time is that the water is full of demons, the water is full of evil spirits, little s. The water is full of chaos. And for added measure, the water is full of the great and mighty Leviathan, a giant crocodile-like freak monster creature that God created and put in the waters to play, as the Old Testament tells us. Thankfully, it's on the other side of the world, right? Well, Peter and the rest of the disciples know these teachings from the days of their youth about demons in the water, evil spirits in the water, chaos in the water, and Leviathan, chomp type thing. And what does Peter do? He gets in the water. And for added measure, now in the ancient world, the people believe there's a false goddess called the lady in the water who swims in the waters. So verse 30, you can see why Peter's freaked out. Peter looks around at the high waves of water and he is terrified and he begins to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouts. Peter gets that sinking feeling the moment he realizes he is in trouble. Oh, crap. Save me now. Get me out of this now. Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me from myself. What am I doing out here? We know in Scripture, Peter only says the word, save me, Lord. But we know in his mind, his mind's running like 90 miles an hour. He's saying all those other things as well, because he's Peter. Verses 31 to 32. Instantly, Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed Peter. You don't have much faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Jesus saves, and in this particular case, and in all of our cases, Jesus does rescue missions. Aren't we glad? This begs the question, have you ever been rescued by Jesus? And you're like, Pastor, yes, and even more than once, and you can tell stories. Well, the call through it all is to hold steady and to have faith and to take courage and to know that Jesus is with us, either literally or otherwise. In this stretch of Scripture, Matthew 14, verse 31 it's like Jesus is going to teach Peter, Peter, you got a choice to make. RIP or keep beasting on. RIP means rest in peace. It is over, finito, finished. It is all done. There's nothing more to be done. To keep beasting on is mantra and code for to strive to do well, to strive to do exceptionally well in serving and glorifying Jesus Christ. You got to keep at it. Peter's got a decision to make. Verse 32. Peter and Jesus climb back in the boat, and the wind stops. The contrast is staggering as you walk with the Lord. In times of ferocious winds, and then a time of no wind or calm. If you've spent any time in central Illinois, Springfield, Danville, Decatur, Champaign-Urbana, Quincy, you get the idea. That's like a, a promo on a, a TV station up in central Illinois. We lived up there for 14 years 
The winds are legendary. You can be standing right next to someone and you are shouting at each other and you're instantly getting a new hairdo. And if someone's got a wig or someone's got a toupee, they might blow off and you see someone in a new way and there's strong, ferocious wind and the wind is raging 30, 40, 50 miles an hour. So in central Illinois in those days where the calm comes, it's like, whoa. I can hear the person I'm talking to. I can have a dinner in a pavilion outside in the open country and the plate of food and drink don't spray up in my face. It's different. When the wind stops and things are so calm, you notice and ah, you can breathe. Verse 33, the disciples get their sea legs, so to speak, and Peter as well. Oh, bless your heart, Peter. And they worship Jesus. They say, you really are the Son of God. There's a realization of the majesty of Jesus Christ because Jesus can walk on water. Jesus can calm the storms. He can change lives. He can even feed thousands and thousands of people in a crowd without having to go to a Captain D's by food that is miraculously multiplied. The majesty of Jesus goes on and on throughout the Bible. Colossians chapter 1, I've noted many times where it's really wordy and thick for about 23 verses, and it's saying that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation, and Jesus is the head of the church. Amen? Jesus is the head of the church. For those that are disputing or fussing and fighting, to quote a little Bob Marley in the church, look towards heaven and put focus on Jesus. That's my plan. Big idea here, when the storm goes away and things are calm, the last big idea, soup pog. This may catch on. You may go walk around and tell people what soup pog is. Stepping out on the promises of God. It was back at my first annual conference, a gathering of pastors and some church members in Tennessee, where before every session, before every worship service, speaker, report, vote, and legislation that was taken, we would sing a catchy little song. Oh, we're stepping out on the promises of God. We're stepping out on the promises of God. We're stepping out on the promises of God. It's kind of like, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. You get the idea. And we would sing this over and over and over again for three and a half days and four worship services. And it stuck with me. And I put an acronym to it, Suit Pog. Kind of fun, or maybe not. Stepping out on the promises of God has a double ring. On the one hand, it means I am done with God and I am gone. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for option number two to where I am in with God. I'm going to hold steady with God with pandemic or no pandemic, whether there's COVID in my household or no COVID in my household, whether there's uh, challenges and problems in the world around me, whether there are triggered and offended people around me or not, I'm going to focus and put my eyes to heaven, look to Jesus, and step out on the promises of God. Verses 35 and 36. Jesus' ministry continues. There are healings. After they had crossed the Sea of Galilee, they landed at Gennesaret. The news of their arrival spread quickly throughout the whole surrounding area. And some people were bringing all their sick to be healed. The sick begged Jesus to let them touch even the fringe of his robe. And all who touched it were healed. Jesus saves Jesus does rescue missions, and Jesus heals. And then people have to decide what they're going to do about that. Are they going to follow Jesus Christ? Do they feel a nudge or a ping to walk with him, either figuratively or literally? Take the big ideas with you today. We are invited to walk with Jesus. As we walk with Jesus, we go on an adventure. As the storms of life are raging, the adventure is in full force and full effect and suit pog, stepping out on the promises of God. So who can you count on? Who do you walk with? We're invited to walk with Jesus, amen? Through the thick and the thin, to the dark side of the moon and back again, and maybe even back again. Receive these words as we close up from a Methodist songbook. Walk with me, and I will walk with you, and build the land that God has planned where love shines through. Now, Peter was a most unlikely man to lead the flock, but Jesus knew his holiness, and Peter became the rock. And when you share your faith with me and work for life made new, the witness of your faithfulness calls me to walk with you. And you can almost waltz, walk with me, and I will walk with you. That kind of thing. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, indeed. May we continue to find our courage, the depths of our faith, the depths of our strength to walk with you, 
do whatever life throws at us. Help us like in the example of the feeding of the multitudes, the feeding of the thousands with bread and fish, to follow the example of Jesus, to bless what God has provided, and to look toward heaven. And to think of you, O God, and also to think of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the work that you can do in our lives, and especially the miraculous work that you can do around us, pandemic or no pandemic. We pray for all of these things in Jesus' name. And now, mindful that God always looks for our response, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his followers to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today at Bethany Church, located in Columbia, Illinois. We invite you to come and join us again uh, next week to invite others to join you either online or in person in the sanctuary, 10 a.m. Sunday mornings. The side sanctuary door opens at 945. We'll continue on in the Gospel of Matthew and walking with Jesus as he teaches us about children and he also teaches us about conflict resolution next week. Until next week. Enjoy the last song from the praise band. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, Promises of God, my Savior. Standing on the promises, standing on the promises. I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on Thank you so much for being here. Please come again and bring someone with you. And we'll start to see more and more people um, reappear as the vaccine goes around. And people get one dose and two doses of the vaccine. And you're welcome to exit through the side doors already. Thanks.